Welcome, everyone. Welcome to another Silicon Labs product podcast. I'm excited for our episode today. Last week, there was an announcement, and it was about a new solution called Matter. And today, I have David Meixner. He's the senior product manager at Silicon Labs, and he's, he prior covered Zigbee and Thread. And so now, obviously, he's going to be a, a great person to help us better understand what exactly Matter is. Thanks for joining today, David. Thanks, Kyle. Happy to be here. Yeah. Well, before we start, did you do anything uh, interesting this weekend? Uh, well, it's actually starting to warm up finally in Boston. We had some good weather in the 70s. Usually I'd be out running a lot, but my wife and I just had our first child. So he's three months old now and he's kind of taking up all of our free time. So traded in the running shoes and we got a lot of walks with the stroller. Well, that's a, as a fellow runner uh, and also a father of three, I can understand the, uh, the balance that you have to. Those uh, long weekend runs with a three-month-old don't sound uh, so good for uh, you and your wife. Yeah, it's been uh, figuring, figuring out a lot of new, new things. Well, uh, once you figure that out, uh, let everybody else know, because I know everybody else struggles with that <laughs> as well. But the reason, as I mentioned, I invited you to join the podcast today is to talk about matter. Uh, you have the time and uh, you interested in that? Oh, definitely. All right. Well, why don't you just start off by explaining what Matter is? I saw in their announcement this term universal standard for connected things. So maybe you can explain to the audience what exactly that means. Sure. Uh, So Matter is trying to solve this problem where we see the IoT space and the smart home very fragmented. And it's very confusing for consumers and it, it's very hard for developers because, right, if a homeowner wants to go to Home Depot and buy a smart light bulb, they have to worry about all these things like, you know, what is Zigbee? What is Z-Wave? What's BLE? You know, will this work with HomeKit? Will this work with my Amazon Echo? Will this work with Google? There's no clear answers to that for most people. And so what Matt is trying to do is create a universal application layer that will talk to any of these ecosystems. So the consumer doesn't need to worry about, will this work with you know, product X? They just need to know this is a Matter device. I can run Matter devices in my house. Um, so it simplifies that for the consumer. And then it also makes it easier for the developer because on the same side, you know, they were having to develop different SKUs depending which ecosystem. So a HomeKit light bulb might be a different SKU than a Alexa light bulb or something. So Matter is really trying to solve that problem of having this fragmentation and make it easier for everyone. Uh, and so Matter is really the application layer that's designed to run on top of any, any IP protocol, right? So Matter sits above the TCP UDP layer. And um, initially it will have support for Wi-Fi and Thread as the, the first two IP protocols. But it, you know, in the future, it could expand to any other IP protocol that they want to bring in. All right. You mentioned, though, it's sitting on top of those IP networks. Uh, and you mentioned Thread and Wi-Fi. Uh, you mentioned a little bit about Bluetooth. How do they work inside of uh, Matter? When it's deployed, what is Matter doing with those IP networks in the application layer? Yeah, so Matter is um, using those IP network layer to, to transport the messages. So the nice thing about IP is that you know cloud developers know how to work with it. Mobile app developers know how to work with it. And so you can really have end-to-end connectivity. So if you're a cloud developer and you want to talk to a Matter device, all you need to know is that Matter's IP address, right? You don't need to know if it's a Zigbee or if it's a Thread or a Wi-Fi device. You just know that it's an IP device. And so these, these protocols help to route those messages, those Matter messages, you know, under the hood. So in the case of Wi-Fi, right, everyone knows how kind of Wi-Fi moves around their home and you can talk to any device, you know, using the Wi-Fi router you have in your house. Similarly with Thread, any thread devices can talk to each other over IP on that thread network. If the thread device needs to get a message, you know, to a different network over to your Wi-Fi network or, you know, out through the ethernet, there's something called a border router. And that border router is going to take those matter messages that were running on thread and then convert them to like a Wi-Fi or ethernet packet to route them to wherever else they need to go. So these IP networking layers are really just transporting these matter messages, uh, you know, wherever they need to, to go from the cloud to the device or the phone. Okay, but it will use Bluetooth out of the box for commissioning, right? It'll, it'll be used for the, the ease of use using your mobile phone or your mobile device for commissioning or adding the devices to those IP networks? Yeah, that's right. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. So yeah, in order to have a secure communication, right, you need, you need some sort of secure channel to, to add these devices to your network, and security is very important for Matter. And so, yes, when, when these devices first boot up, they'll come up in this Bluetooth mode so that they compare directly with your phone. And then your phone can kind of exchange the secure networking credentials to that device to help them get onto the the thread or Wi-Fi network that they need to get on. All right. Well, that's great as far as understanding what matter is, but 
on the website and in the press release, I was looking into some of the applications. I saw a lot of information targeting the connected home, the smart home, had your you know traditional lighting, HVAC security systems. I even saw a TV. I guess that's a new addition with, with uh, Matter. But what about some future expansion? Are they looking into industrial applications? They are. Yeah, absolutely. There's actually a industrial and commercial working group within Matter um, that's kind of thinking about those. Uh, but yeah, initially, um, Matter is targeting smart home applications, like you mentioned, like lighting and HVAC and sensors. Um, but a lot of these applications are also found in commercial building, right? Commercial building obviously needs lighting. It obviously has an HVAC system. And the primary difference for the commercial space is how you commission these devices. So in the home, a consumer can, you know, one at a time pair each light bulb to his network. You know, maybe, maybe he'll be installing 20 light bulbs or something if he's a power user. But in a commercial building, right, there's hundreds or thousands of lights across rooms and floors. And so the commissioning process is a little different. Um, and that's really what Matter won't have in the beginning is how do you commission these large networks? And so that's something that will come later. But the device types themselves that are being defined now, that'll definitely be reusable by those commercial customers when they start to launch their Matter products. Okay. So now we explained, you know, you're targeting the connected home, smart home, possible expansion to the industrial space. How will the application layer software be developed and distributed uh, once they're interested in looking into using it in their design? Where do they go to get that, that software? Is it going to be open source, similar to you know, OpenThread or Amazon's free RTOS? How are they going to share and develop that source code with customers? Yeah, so it's definitely open source, and it's actually under development right now um, in a public forum. So you can go to GitHub. It's under the uh, project chip name on GitHub. So, so that was the old code name for Matter. So the, the code will still be un- developed under that. And But yeah, it was very important for this group that everything be done very transparently out in the open uh, with a community support. So if you want, you can go look at what's available today on the GitHub and, and just start running some example applications. And I think the important thing to understand though is um, this is de- definitely different than other software releases we've done where it's being developed out in the open. So if you do go uh, and, and experiment with the code that's available there today, just you know, be aware that it is very preliminary. Things are still being developed and things are still moving very fast. And so uh, it, does, it does break a lot, but um, it's, it's progressing well and we're trying to get a lot done quickly. All right. Well, that being said, uh, you know, test and certification is a huge step. So people get that open source software they, they start developing their products, but the final few stages are test and certification. I saw that in your announcement and then on the, the website that this is planned for the second half of 2021. How has Silicon Labs been involved in that process and how are they helping customers with that test and certification? That's right. Yeah. So the certification program is planned to open up at the end of this year, which, which is the point when uh, device manufacturers could go and certify their devices and then launch uh, matter certified devices in the market. So what's happening between now and then is that there's a series of test events. And these test events are designed to do a couple things. One is to uh, develop that certification program. So they're doing it in stages. And then two, make sure that these tests work across uh, different vendors and uh, different device manufacturers. So right now they're basically having monthly test events and Silicon Labs is participating in that. And they're testing kind of the features as they're being developed. And then it's also ensuring that, you know, our devices and, and other manufacturers' devices all interoperate together. And then the, the companies participating in these test events will be the first to be able to launch certified devices at the end of the year. So they'll have a little bit of a head start. And because of all the work that Silicon Labs is doing to support that, you know, we'll definitely be very familiar and intimate with the, the test process, what the tests are, and how you, you know, get a device ready that was built on top of VFR in a certifiable state. So that's something we'll be able to quickly help our customers do uh, once that certification program does open at the end of the year. Okay. And, uh, and another thing uh, on my prior podcast with Bob Power, he was talking about some things that Silicon Labs has done to contribute to open source and one of them being uh, Matter. He talked about something called the Zap tool. Um, I'm wondering, you know, it, it had to do with Matter. I don't know a lot about it. Can you explain to our listeners, what does ZAP provide engineers that are looking to develop with Matter? Yeah, so ZAP stands for uh, ZCL Advanced Platform Tool. Um, and this is really a tool that uh, makes it easy to configure your application for the device type that you want to build. So uh, for listeners who are familiar with Application Builder and Zigbee, it's kind of like that. That was something we had in Simplicity Studio. It was a nice graphical tool where you could go in and say, 
I'm building a light bulb or I'm building a door lock and it would create a lot of the configuration files automatically for you around that. So you didn't have to go and figure out all the, all the bits that are needed for those device types. And so the Zap tools is doing the same thing, um, but now it's no longer tied to Studio. We've ported it as an open source tool and then provided that so it can be used by Matter. So, so the Zap tool really what it does is it makes it easy for developers to configure their device so that they don't have to spend time figuring out how do I, you know, how do I get the basic building blocks in place that's already done for them. And then they can go and quickly add, you know, the value that they want to provide on top of that. That's great. Yeah. I've used the Simplicity Studio app builder. I know that was a huge way for customers to quickly get, as you mentioned in earlier comments, that product that can be certified and tested and, and validated. So now with the Zap tool, I'm assuming that's going to take a lot of those interconnections and all the software that's required to meet the test suite. And, and then, as you mentioned, they can just focus on their small part of the, the matter design. That's right. And I, one thing I'll add there is I think by us contributing this tool, right, we didn't have to do that, but we saw that it was going to help um, the matter community and help move this technology forward. And I think it really shows Silicon Labs leadership in this space um, and our dedication to, to wanting to make sure that matter is successful, but also that we're seen as, um, you know, lead developers in this project. That's a true testament to just our support of the community. Yeah. I mean, with our experience in Zigbee, with the, the ZCL uh, library, it's absolutely, uh, if, if you guys are going and starting to develop with this software and you need somebody that understands it, uh, doesn't just understand the silicon underneath it, Silicon Labs is probably the place I would go to get those answers uh, for your questions. Well, this has been uh, very insightful. I really appreciate you taking the time. I know our audience with the announcement last week probably had a lot of questions about Matter. They probably still have a few more. Uh, maybe you can join me in the future episodes and we can talk about other things as uh, more comes out about matter. Yeah, that'd be great. I'd love to. And then um, I'll just say, uh, yeah, as part of that announcement last week, we did launch a new matter landing page on silabs.com. So if you do want to get more info, you can go to silabs.com slash matter and check it out. All right. Well, I'll put that link into the, the notes of the podcast. So all the listeners, you can jump in and get that link and go straight there and find out more about matter as uh, David mentioned. Well, so thanks, David, for taking the time. Appreciate you joining. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you, Kyle. Good talking to you. Well, again, I thank all of our listeners for taking the time to download the podcast and listening to this episode. Until next time, everyone, stay safe.